Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to EDUSAT live lectures. Dear friends, today we are going to talk about second order landforms of Indian Peninsula. In this lecture, we are going to discuss this topic with us, with us our subject expert Dr. B. W. Pandey. Dr. Pandey is Associate Professor in Department of Geography in Delhi School of Economics in D Delhi University. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lectures. Welcome sir. Thank you Amrit. Thank you very much. Good afternoon friends. We had uh, uh, last session, we had discussed about uh, second order landforms of Indian Peninsula and uh, in today we will have the second part of the second order landforms of Indian Peninsula. In the first lecture, we had discussed about Plato regions of India, their geological structure, ecological setup and uh, also few description of the socio-economic impact of the Plato's of peninsular India. Today, in the continuation of the same lecture, we will discuss today about mountains and hills of Indian Peninsula. As I told you, among the second order landforms, the structural landforms which are generated, developed over the first order landforms means over the continents, over the ocean by the endogenic forces called second order landforms. So, among the second order landforms, we had discussed the plateaus in detail, some mountains, rift valleys, hills, all the <coughs> structures we will discuss today about Indian Peninsula. You know, peninsular mountains and hills are very, very old. They are much older than Himalayan region, North Indian region. You know the history of the Indian Peninsula. When Indian plate was moving northward after the division, when it was detached from Antarctica continent at the time of Pangaea, at the time of Gondwana land, when this plate was moving northward, there were number of tectonic forces which happened that a large number of relief were developed over peninsular region. Therefore, most of the hills and mountains have been eroded, modified by the denudational processes. Friends, the hills and mountains of the peninsula let us see beginning from the north to the south respectively from west coast to the east coast. When Indian plate was in the shape of island moving northward crossing about say 50 to 40 degrees south latitude, then large amount of sediments along the northern margin of the Indian plate were folded up and forms big horn, the old fold chain of the mountains like Aravali, Vindhyachal and Rajmahal Garo region. Now, you can see on the map right from Aravali to Vindhyachal, then to Kaimur hills, Rajmahal hills and finally, in the Meghalayan hills, these were one chain of the mountain range. Later on, there were large scale, long duration denudational processes, erosion and these hills are now divided, separated. So, Aravali is separate. Vindhya range are separate and Raj Mahal 
further the development of Raj Mahal Garo Gap. So, the Meghalayan hills were also separated from Raj Mahal. Later on, the plate was moving northward. There were number of folds and faults developed over Indian Peninsula, which give rise to the coastal ranges, coastal mountains like Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats. Western Ghats mountain were refolded. They were upliftment affected by upward downward movement of the land. So, the piece of the land which moved downward submerged in the Arabian Sea form extensive continental shelves along the west coast of India and western Ghats further uplifted. Formation of eastern Ghats and a large number of bluffs, large number of bluffs developed over peninsula. These bluffs are popularly known as Balaghat range, Harishchandra range, Satmala range, Ajanta range, Gavilgad range, Garjat hills, Ramgad hills, so many bluffs develop in the interior of the peninsula. Friends, we will discuss detail one by one. So, first of all, we will discuss the Aravali. You know, Aravali, very old mountain called today it is in the form of relict mountain, relict surface, highly eroded away. And today, Aravali is extended approximately 800 kilometer right from Delhi to Ahmedabad. In Delhi, Aravali known as Delhi Ridge, Kamla Nehru Ridge, Raisina Hill and then extended to Haryana, Rajasthan where it is called as Harsnath Hill, Kumbhalgad Hills and finally, it is extended in the south to Gujarat where it is known as Gir Hills. Aravali old structure therefore, it contains number of mineral resources number of mineral resources and including precious stones, the uh, mica, the one of the largest producer of the non metallic minerals, metallic minerals like zinc and lead, di the silver production, the granite production and large number of other mineral resources because of its old structure. Friends, Aravali, if you see the physiography, Aravali is very famous for its cultural divide. It is also called as drainage divide and it is a climatic divide, vegetational divide. See, very interesting that east of the Aravali, there is a subhumid climate. So, parallel to Aravali, there are 25 degree iso heights line passing parallel to Aravali. So, in the east of Aravali, rainfall is more than 25 centimeter per annum, it goes around up to 50 centimeter per annum. Therefore, having subhumid climate in the west of the Aravali, rainfall decreases even less than 25 degrees Celsius. So, there is a dry climate, arid climate in the west, the so, climatic divide and vegetations are the index of climate. Vegetation acclimatize 
climatic conditions. Therefore, in the east of the Aravalli, there are semi arid vegetation, tropical dry deciduous vegetation, and in the west of Aravalli, xerophytes, arid vegetation. Second parameter Aravalli is drainage divide. Aravalli divides water divide between Bay of Bengal system and Arabian Sea system. River Banas, River Banas drain eastward and join Chambal as a tributary through Chambal to Yamuna, then Ganga and finally Bay of Bengal. So, water of the eastern slope of Aravalli drain to Bay of Bengal and in the western part of Aravalli it drains river Luni. Through the Luni that water drains in Arabian Sea no doubt in the lean period Luni become inland drainage because of lack of water. But during monsoon, during rainfall, Luni drains in the Arabian Sea. So, it is a water divide, drainage divide. And finally, you will see Aravalli is also famous for its cultural division. It is cultural divide. In the west of Aravalli and the east of Aravalli have opposite nature of culture. East of Aravalli having Mewar culture called Rajputana, Maharaja Rana Pratap, Maharaja Uday Singh, Man Singh, so many kingdoms that Rajputana culture in the eastern part of Aravalli. Coming to the western part of Aravalli, there are Marwar culture, more more business community. So, Marwadi culture in the west, Mewar culture in the east. Friends, Aravalli, average height approximately 600 meter and at Mount Abu, a place called Guru Sikhar is the highest point of Aravalli. This is approximately 1700 meter. Therefore, Aravalli is relict mountain, eroded mountain, old fold mountains. Number 2, now come to the central mountains. Central mountains form the group of the mountain and also it forms a cordillera. I have told you that cordillera, the group of mountains when three mountains are parallel, the group of the mountains called Cordillera. So, we have three mountains Bindhyachal, Satpura and Mahadev. Bindhyachal, Satpura, Mahadev all together form Cordillera and let me tell you that eastern extension of Vindhyan range known as Kaimur Hills. Kaimur Hills. So, Kaimur Hill is the eastern extension of Vindhyan range. So, Vindhyan mountain it is largest and the longest mountain of central India. In fact, Vindhyan range is also physiographic divider, geological divider, cultural divider as well as agricultural divider. Vindhyan mountain, a long chain of the mountain right from the boundary of Gujarat extended to the Jharkhand. North of Vindhyachal are the extra peninsular India very young, very new land surface formed 
एज ए प्लेन रिवर प्लेन्स गंगा प्लेन इंडो सतलज प्लेन ब्रह्मपुत्रा प्लेन दैट इज कॉल्ड एक्स्ट्रा पेनसुलर लैंड एंड साउथ ऑफ इंडिया चल वेरी ओल्ड लैंड मास क्रेटन ओरिजिनल क्रस्ट ऑफ द अर्थ व्हेन इट वाज फॉर्म फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ गुंडवाना लैंड पार्ट ऑफ पेंजिया वेरी ओल्ड सरफेस इन द साउथ ऑफ विंध्या सो इट इज अ जियोलॉजिकल डिवाइड ऑल्सो मिनरल रिसोर्सेस बेस्ड ऑन जियोलॉजिकल स्ट्रक्चर रॉक्स लाइक आर्कियन धारवाड़ कुडप्पा विंध्यन गुंडवाना दीज रॉक्स कंटेन मिनरल्स minerals are not found in the great northern plains such as is found in the southern india because of geological differences in north of the bindhyan mountain there are very new very new surface found by the deposition so this is say neozoic surface which is alluvials alluvials very very new surface therefore the less number of minerals because north of the vindhyan the fertile agricultural land so there's intensive farming of the rice and wheat and other crops coming to the south of vindhyan range the black soil red soil and let right soil the south of vindhyan range having industrial farming say cotton say uh, tea coffee rubber coconut and millets because of black soil red soil and let right soil friends vindhyan is cultural divide agricultural divide structural divide the geological divide and also very important is drainage divide north of northern slope rivers rain water drain through ganga system in the bengal and south of the vindhyan rivers drain both in bay of bengal as well as in the arabian sea because that through the rift valleys river narmada river tapi draining towards arabian sea and through the old valleys rivers like mahanadi godavari krishna draining to the bay of bengal friends vindhyan mountain northern slope of vindhyan mountain is gentle have been gentle slope because of continuous erosion by the rivers by the rain water therefore northern slope of vindhyan mountain ends with the gangetic plain the slope of northern slope of vindhyan mountain ends with the gangetic plain ganga plain and lower part of the slope of vindhyan mountain broadly largely eroded away now for your kind information the northern slope of vindhyan range are largely eroded away and have been converted to denudational plateau converted to erosional plateau plateau of bundelkhand plateau of baghelkhand plateau of bhander so respectively from west to east bundelkhand bhander and baghelkhand plateaus are formed due to erosion of the northern slope of vindhyan mountains 
southern slope of Vindhyan mountains or steep wall shape so wall shape slope because of the rift valley southern boundary of Vindhyan mountain demarcated by rift valley they called Narmada rift Narmada rift therefore one side very gentle slope other side southern part wall shape slope Vindhyan mountain east of the Vindhyan mountain known as Kaimur hills and due to the erosion of Kaimur hills it has formed the Baghel Khan plateau. Friends, we will continue this lecture in the next lecture series and if you have any question you are most welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Hello friends, welcome back to the Educet lecture and we are talking about the second order land forms of Indian Peninsula. So, as we are we were discussing about the Bindhan mountains and its cordillera Satpura and Mahadev. So, Vindhyan eastern part of Vindhyan called Bundelkhand, Bhandir region, Baghilkhand, which is eroded away converted to the plateau. So, as a hill it is known as Khaimur hill and as a plateau it is known as Bhandir plateau, Baghilkhand plateau. And it is also a big water divide between Ganga system and Mahanadi system. Eastern extension, easternmost horn Raj Mahal, Garo, Khasi and Jayantia. Let me tell you that no doubt Garo, Khasi and Jayantia lying in Meghalaya, north eastern states. Geographically, these hills are known as Purvanchal, Purvanchal mountains, but you must know it that Garo, Khasi and Jayantia are very old geological structure, very old plateau, which were the part of the Indian peninsula. You can see on the map, there is satellite map where you can see India moving northward as an island. Then you can find the Aravalis, Vindhyan, Raj Mahal, Garo, Khasi and Jayantia were formed. South of Vindhyachal is Satpura. Satpura, so northern part of Satpura is Narmada Rift and southern part of Satpura is Tapi Rift. So, Satpura is the largest and the longest block mountain of India. Satpura, northern part of Satpura have Narmada river, southern part of Satpura have Tapi river. And because of the rift, both the sides of Satpura rivers draining to the Arabian Sea. Otherwise, general inclination of the slope of Indian Peninsula is from west to east. So, western ghats are water divide. So, entire peninsula water drains to Bay of Bengal and friends see the consequences because of the major part of the peninsula water drains eastward because of its slope. So, the content of salt in the water of the Bay of Bengal is comparatively less than the water of Arabian Sea because less fresh water draining to Arabian Sea. Satpura is a block mountain and south of Satpura are Mahadev and my call. Mahadev moves parallel to Satpura and join Satpura in Madhya Pradesh. Friends, where two mountains or more than two mountains join the form mountain knot like Pamir knot. Similarly, when Mahadev joins Satpura in Madhya Pradesh, it form Pachmari, Pachmari knot and very famous tourist place Pachmari well covered with solar forest and the peak of the Pachmari, peak of the knot is Dhupgarh and that is the highest peak of central India. Highest peak of Madhya Pradesh is Dhupgarh. Further, in the east, Maikal range, Maikal range joins Satpura. It forms another mountain knot 
which is very famous you have heard the name Amar Kantak. So, Amar Kantak again densely covered with solar forest and from Amar Kantak because of its slope is steep and the slope radiates in three different directions. Therefore, there is very interesting drainage pattern, radial pattern of drainage have been developed. From where water of river Narmada, river Son and the tributaries of Mahanadi originate from Amarkantak. So, it form radial pattern of drainage covered with solar forest. So, Bindhyachal, Satpura, Mahadev are parallel and form the central cordillera. Central cordillera. South of Bindhyachal, Satpura and Mahadev or the western ghats and the eastern ghats. Friends, I have told you that western ghats were uplifted again and again several times. You can see in the map the west of the western ghats there were piece of land it was land and rivers were draining in the Arabian sea after covering a longer distance. But when Indian plate was moving northward there were tectonic force applied on the southern part of peninsula and the part of that land submerged in the ocean. You can see on the map the line, the line which shows the continental shelf. You can see continental shelf are very narrow along the eastern coast of India, wide extensive along the western coast of India. This is because of subsidence of land in the ocean and the part of land when moves down is near, nearby land moves up. So, that form upliftment. So, western ghats are the mixture of the mountains like fold as well as fault mountain. Right from west to right from north to south western ghats approximately 1600 kilometer and contains number of peaks number of peaks and these peaks are like to show you these peaks are well covered with the solar forest because of these peaks it create barrier between the Arabian Sea and the peninsula. The north to south you can find a number of number of passes number of peaks on the western ghats peaks like Salher, Kalsubai and Mahabaleswar. These three important peaks located in Maharashtra and Kalsubai is the highest peak of Maharashtra. Then in Karnataka the Kudri Mukh mountain and in Tamil Nadu Doda Beta, Doda Beta second highest peak of western ghats and second highest peak of Indian peninsula. Further south in Kerala there are peaks like Anaimudi and August Himalai. Anaimudi 2695 meter Anaimudi is the highest peak of south India. Anaimudi is the highest peak of western ghats. Friends along with the peaks range of the western ghats there are important passes. These passes are gateway. These passes provide efficiency of network of transportation with the west coast of India and the rest part of the country. These passes are Thal Ghat and Bhur Ghat in Maharashtra and Pal Ghat in Kerala. Through these passes the ro railways, roadways are developed connected 
west coast to the rest part of the country. Now, I would like to tell you that Western Ghats, north of Western Ghats, Vindhyan Range, further Aravali. So, if you draw a line from, from Aravali covering to Vindhyan Range to Western Ghats, this form national water divide. So, in the west, water drains in Arabian Sea system and in the east, water drains in Bay of Bengal system. So, it is called national water divide. So, western Ghats are national water divide. In the west of the western Ghats, water drains in Arabian Sea and in the east of the western Ghats, water drain in Bay of Bengal. Now, the some uh, detail I would like to discuss with you. These uh, peaks and the mountain knots are very, very important from tourism point of view, from biodiversity point of view, from cultural point of view, environmental point of view and most important that apart from the forest product, these, these mountain knots and the forest or the ultimate source of the carbon sink. Friends, northern part of Western Ghats known as Sahyadri Mountain. Northern part of Western Ghats known as Sahyadri Mountain. And southern part known as Nilgiri. Nilgiri Mountain. So, two broad division, Sahyadri and Nilgiri. Sayadri and Nilgiri join. Sayadri and Nilgiri join form very big mountain knot. Very big mountain knot that is known as Udagamandalam, popularly known as Uti. The place is Uti. Mountain knot is Udagamandalam. And the peak is Doda Beta that is the second highest peak of the Indian Peninsula. Now, another interesting geographical information I would like to share with you that south of Nilgiri, there are number of hills joining each other and form a big mountain knot. So, Nilgiri, Cardimum, and Annamalai, three hills, Nilgiri, Cardamom and Annamalai join and form a big mountain knot. This mountain knot covers large forest area and source of origin of number of rivers. The name of the mountain knot is Dabar Malai. The name of the mountain knot is Dabar Malai and the peak of the mountain knot is Anaimudi. Anaimudi, 2695 meter, highest peak of the South India, highest peak of the Western Ghats. And from where lot of tributaries of River Kaveri, River Vagai and rivers draining in the east Bay of Bengal and number of rivers draining in the west in Kerala in the Arabian Sea, Arabian Sea including Periyar originate from Dabar Malai and south of the south of the Anaimudi is August Himalai, August Himalai. Friends, though entire western Ghats are densely covered with forest. But I would like to mention that southern part of Western Ghats, the slope merging in the Arabian Sea, that is as a windward slope where the winds from the Arabian Sea strike, forms cloud and said heavy rainfall. Because of windward slope, 
the southern part of the western ghats the slope towards arabian sea are densely covered with forest you can say mega biodiversity forest mega biodiversity forest and dominated by indigenous species indigenous species of flora and fauna friends if any forest having mega biodiversity and dominated by indigenous species local species that forest known as hot spots so western ghats malabar are the hot spots of india we have two hot spots one the stone himalayan hot spots second is western ghats malabar hot spots that is a nature and ultimate source of carbon sink very good tourist place and the eastern ghats are largely eroded by rivers friends you can see the map rivers originating from western ghats draining all the way to the eastern slope coming to the east these rivers have cut down eastern ghats and have divided therefore unlike western ghats as a chain of mountain eastern ghats are hills which are known as different local names like sevrai hill jawadi hill nallamala palkonda mahendagiri malagiri all that friends this way this way we have covered the hills and plateaus of the indian peninsula and regarding hills and plateaus of the indian peninsula if you have any question you can contact to the cec thank you very much on that note i would like to thank sir for this very enriching lecture and thank you dear friends for watching stay tuned and keep watching thank you